very much. Uh, thank you, my colleagues. Other than improving the margin and giving a sparkling presentation now, I feel no pressure at all. So thanks <laughs> very much for that. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And could I also just say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our employees who hopefully are watching this today. And I hope you're having a safe day. So just a bit of background before I get into the main bulk of the presentation about myself. I've been with Billfinger for 12 years, uh, worked mainly in the industrial services line, uh, and looked after Northwest Europe for the latter years. So I've been here throughout quite a journey, as I'm sure some of you have as well. I was speaking earlier to, to, to one of you about an analogy about a train. So I was here before the train entered the tunnel. I was here when the light at the end of the tunnel was a pinprick. Now the light has come really into focus and we are nearly out of the tunnel. We are nearly back into the light. Confidence is back in the business. Delivery is there. Orders are up. Profit is back. Our people are confident again. And we will deliver the future. So let me tell you how we do it, because this is where we make the money. Yeah, this is what we do. And this is how I'm going to try and help make a difference with the rest of the team, the 35,000 people that we have working for us. And what do we do? We make incremental margin improvement. So the bulk of our business is framework contracts, engineering and maintenance. And we've been working on these sites for 25 years, some of them 75 years. Yet, so we know what we're doing. And we can gradually improve performance year on year on year. That's what it's about in e &M. In the project area, as Tom talked about, it's about project delivery. And we've really strengthened our governance, so we go into the right projects, we make the right choices at the right time, we then manage the risk as we go in, and when we're executing, we do short interval project management. So we see the weak signals. Strong signals, we've lost money, are a waste of time. We've got to see the weak ones before it happens, and that's what we're getting good at. North America especially, they are really moving forward on seeing those weak signals. So a very positive environment. Then we're going to look at a little bit more about what we're going to do in the future and higher margin work, where we're securing better portfolios, both in E&M and in technologies. The technology area has really moved on quickly. And that's also part of why we have the separation, so we can really see those products and we can engineer those products correctly and get them out to the markets because it is a little bit different for me and M. We talked a little bit about cross-border, and this is where Billfinger is quite unique. You know, we work right across the world, so we've got our four, four regions, Middle East, North America, the two in Europe, so Northwest Europe and Central Europe, and that's quite unique. So we can go with customers to various parts of the world and deliver the same services in the same areas and build on those strengths and reduce the risks for ourselves and those customers. So very important. We both reduce risk. It's a mutual uh, journey that we're going through. And then, as Christina was talking about, we've got to get more efficient on SGNA. And that's throughout the whole loop, yeah, from start to finish, in headquarters and in our operations. And there's more to go out there. And that sense of purpose, that we do things for a reason, we do things for a purpose, which is to create money, is coming back into Billfinger, and that is what we're going to carry on doing more of. But what's most important for us? Safety. Uh, people out there seeing will have been surprised it took me so long to get on to talking about safety, but operations is all about safety. Yeah, it is why we win work. We have to be world class. We are world class. We have to continue to be excellent. We don't work for Shell. We don't work for Exxon. We don't work for EDF without being safe. And that's what we need to continue to be. Alongside very compliant culture, which helps in our discipline around project management as well, the compliance journey we've been on. So let's get into some examples, if I can get it going. There we go. Um, just going to pick on some examples in technologies and then into E&M and then some other areas we've done. Uh, and Tom's talked about some of these, so I'll only focus on certain areas. The scrubbers. What's the background to it? There's legislation in around reducing emissions that comes into play in 2020, middle of 2020. So we've got a good order book approaching there. So we'll have a lot of retrofits coming up to that where we need to get it on the old ships. And then after that, we're going to concentrate on the new build market, which is a nice consistent theme coming through. Yeah, so this, it's a 
there will be an increase, then it will steady down into a nice steady level about that. We've got proven technology, yeah, which we've transferred actually from our old desulfurization on power plants over into ships, which is great. And for customers, it's actually very good. It's quite a short payback against using expensive fuel on, over, over to the, uh, the scrubber systems. But what are we doing? We've been quite cautious. We've got a good order book, 100 million, 70 ships. And there's more options there. And we could already accept more orders. But we've got to get our production right. Ships come into a dry dock. You've got to be there. You've got to get the scrubbers on. You have a two-week window. You sail out with it to commission it. Yeah, and if we're not ready, there's liquidated damages. So we are going to make sure our production is right before we start increasing our order book. And we will. And we're doing that to reduce costs as well, so we're doing it in different areas across the world and where the ships come into dry dock into China more often. So that's one area, good high margin work, a seller's market, a seller's market. Farmer and biopharma, an increase in market there that we see throughout with what's happening across the world with society and the products that are going in there. It's a global market with global players and they buy on a global basis as well and we supply on a global basis. Our facilities that we produce, so the production units are skids. We make a lot of them in Austria, and then we ship them around the world. We've just got orders in China, we've got orders in Russia. We are already the number one farmer and biopharma uh, maintenance and technology provider within Europe. 22% or 20, sorry, 20. Roughly 20% revenue growth over the last four years. A good, strong platform to continue to grow. And we'll look at how we can take that onto a wider basis because there's, again, very good margin within those areas. Nuclear, Tom talked about it. In, in Germany, it's a different outlook. But across the world, there's a program, on average, for the next 20 years of 25 reactors being in construction at any one time. At, at, for the next 20 years. There's still 450, roughly, in the US and Europe that require maintenance, that require retrofits and upgrades to extend their lives. This is an area we've worked in for many, many years with Babcock, Noal, and uh, well, BET as it is now. Right now, there's three new builds in Europe, and we're on all of them. Hinkley Point, we've talked about that. We've been on that project now for getting on for 12 months. We've got 20 odd people already down there. Fronted by a UK business, supported with BET. So we set up a special company to do that. This is where we see, again, combined strength. German know-how, UK delivery. So it's through a UK company into the UK. That's the Brexit question out of the way, thank you. And where are we at the moment in that? We will be getting that order sometime in 2019, as long as everything continues as it is. We've already been nominated as the um, strategic supplier for the NSSS pipe work within there. So we have a letter of intent. It is just now a matter of we are agreeing the scope that we do with that and how much other work we may do in that area as well. But not only do we do the Hinkley Point, we also do engineering for Framatome. Uh, Peter's business has been working in there for many, many years. Yeah, we do um, decommissioning and we do handling systems as well. So it isn't just the specialist pipe work that we do. We do a variety of elements within that. And we wouldn't be winning that work if we weren't safe, if we weren't giving high quality and we weren't delivering on time. Because you cannot get away with that in the nuclear industry. And that's what we do. Let's talk a bit about engineering and maintenance. Um, the Fluxus project, a 36 million euro project, very good example. This is about odorization, deodorization of gas, uh, about when you take gas cross border from Germany. So you take in odors and take out odors because of the different uh, legislation that you have in different countries. And we've got very, very good technology in that and very good experience in gas. And we brought together here four companies from Billfinger the engineering people, the fabrication people, the installation people, two installation company, to bring that together and deliver it. Now, a few years ago, we probably wouldn't have done that. But we're working together because we are far better family, far better cooperation, 
and approaching this one bill finger mentality where one plus one equals far more than two because that's what, again, we need to do to grow. Tom already touched upon the bill finger turnaround concept. Uh, it, it is my background and a lot of our colleagues work in this. And this is one thing we can transfer across. It's the biggest single risk for the bulk of our customers every year. We'll be doing the largest turnaround in Europe at Shellmore Dyke, which will be starting later on this year. And we'll have 700, 800 people on that turnaround. And we need to deliver. You know, the profitability of that site is exceptionally good. It's shut down for five to six weeks. I can tell you exactly when we finish the schedule. And if we do not deliver that with the customer on time, their profitability is hit. And they rely on us, and they've relied on us on that site for 25 years to do that with them. Yeah, because we're reliable, we're safe. And that's what we're going to deliver again. One of the other areas, corrosion under insulation. We do a lot of insulation, we do a lot of scaffold. It's a big part of our business. It's a profitable part of our business. This particular area where you get scabbing, corrosion under the insulation of pipe work, especially on oil rigs and in the petrochemical refineries. This accounts for 60% of the hydrocarbon leaks across the world. So when we have big process safety issues, this has caused a lot of that. So this is why there's an investment program across the US and Europe where you've got about 250 refineries of about $2 billion euros. And we're getting access to that market because we've got some, all the services able to bring that together and do it very efficiently and save the customer between 60 and 75% of their cost through putting rope access technician teams together. So we'll have uh, a rope access inspector doing NDT, we'll have an insulator, and we'll have a painter and blaster, all in one team, working off ropes. So they'll go, they'll do the inspection without taking the insulation off. If we find a problem, we'll take the insulation off there and then, and we'll correct the problem, find and fix. And it removes a massive amount of the cost. You don't have to put up scaffold. You don't have to go back, get other people in and do different elements. And this is providing real value, and hence we can do more and more and more. Save the customer money and give them our higher value services. So we're shifting it around, which is what we need to do, provide these solutions to customers to deliver higher margin <coughs> services. The last one I've got is, <laughs> people may not have remembered, this was one I showed, uh, I can't remember whether it was back in October 2017 or whenever it was. I, 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 I thought we were at a worse time, but whatever. Um, this, this was a contract we did. Not all contracts start off brilliantly. We won this contract on an offshore rig. Just checking there's nothing there. Uh, back, in, back in January 2017. And it didn't start off very well. Yet, it was at the time the market was tight. Our Norwegian business needed to win work. And we went in a bit tight. But we worked very hard to bring it back. I remember we talked about here. And we started to bring that back. And we maintained this profitability throughout. And now this contract is very profitable. How did this happen? Measuring our performance. So here, this is all about the norms. So how quickly we do work. That's how we get paid on the bulk of our contracts. Yeah, we get paid for what we do, not how long it takes. So we've got to drive that efficiency. Yeah, you know, our people, it's a lovely day today. Our people are out there working when it's raining. They're turning up at 5 o'clock in the morning. They're walking down to the site. They're getting wet through. They're getting changed. They're getting out there. They're getting briefed for their work. They're getting their permit. They're going to the job site. They're checking their PPE. They're doing their last-minute risk assessment. And then they're starting and delivering work. That is our lives. And that's what we do well. And that's what we look at making more and more efficient. And it's getting down to this incremental level of that bit of performance improvement every day that we can do to make a turnaround like this. And this was done with only billfinger people. No consultants, just billfinger people. Because we're the experts in delivering this in production improvement, productivity improvement. So, at the end of that now, how, how are we going to go forward on this? 
lot of what I do is about what we do as strategy and transferring that to an how we deliver it in the field. Because that's the key. What we do, we've been doing it right, we need to get better at converting that how. And how we do that in North America can be very different to how we do it in the Middle East or how we do it in Central Europe or Northwest Europe and on different sites. And that's what I need to do with my people, that we're working together as a team and doing this better and better and better. What do we do to make sure we're doing it well? We measure it. The facts don't lie. Measure it, put a plan in place to improve it and deliver that plan and then go back and check it and check it and check it and check it because the facts don't lie. And that's how we move it on. And behind that as well, we've got a very good product portfolio now. You know, we've got high margin services, we've got high margin products that we're bringing through to the customers with a good order book behind that to deliver it. So from a delivery perspective, from what's happening out there where we're earning the money, we've got a very positive environment. We're a safe business. We've got, we've got all the tools and techniques to deliver efficiently. And we, we manage our risks and get ahead of them by looking for those weak signals. That's what we need to do. With that, I'll finish. Tom? Good job. Thank you.